Welcome to this course on vulnerability management. Uh, in this video, I'll be demonstrating how you can use Qualys uh, to achieve the six processes involved uh, in vulnerability management. Uh, in my previous video, I spoke about those six processes uh, and I'm going to reiterate them again. Uh, per adventure, you haven't watched those videos, but feel free to go back into my playlist on this course and then you can view um, all of the objectives that I've, I've covered um, as regards vulnerability uh, management. Okay, so what are the six processes that I intend to use um, Qualys to achieve, to implement? Firstly, number one is to identify assets. So about that, number one, identify assets. Number two is to prioritize the asset. Uh, number three is to assess which has to do with um, vulnerability scans. Uh, number four is to report. Number five is remediation stroke patching. And number six is to validate. So what I'm going to use Qualys for is I'm going to use Qualys to demonstrate how you can, I'm going to use Qualys to demonstrate how you can achieve each of these uh, six processes as we get when it comes to vulnerability management. And uh, I would also like to mention that vulnerability management doesn't just have to do with technology. It, it evolves around the three uh, bedrock when it comes to uh, you know achieving vulnerability management. Uh, I've spoken about it as people, uh, processes and then technology so in this video i'll be focusing more on technology which is using qualis to achieve those six processes so what what we're going to be doing is that so i'm using qualis uh, qualis uh, has two ways in which you can achieve to achieve um, vulnerability uh, management so firstly is cloud-based and secondly is on-premise so with cloud-based, they use a subscription. You have to subscribe to a model called VMDR. So VMDR means Vulnerability Management Detection and Response. Uh, it's a subscription that I actually use mainly to achieve vulnerability management. And this model allows you to use uh, to perform those six processes. And then it has other um, embedded um, solutions that you can actually that actually comes with this particular subscription. So, um, so what I've done is I've subscribed to a 30 days trial version. So Qualys allows you to subscribe for 30 days with full license. It can provide you with full uh, um, access to each of those the vulnerability management subscriptions and make use of it to try as many use cases, have a good feel of the tool. And then you can proceed with purchasing um, the actual license based on the IP addresses or the asset that you have in your environment. Uh, the second one is using uh, appliances uh, which will be deployed in your network. So these appliances could be physical appliance or it could actually be a virtual appliance. So another thing I did was that I, I, I installed a virtual um, appliance which uh, actually connects uh to the cloud based uh, so it can feed vulnerability data from the vulnerability from the virtual scanner into um, the cloud environment so the cloud environment provides me with uh, a central a central location um, for visibility uh, of all of my assets of all of my scan data and, and the asset i have in my environment so i'm using um, a, a windows machine which I install an agent, a cloud agent on. I'm going to demonstrate how I achieve that as well. So that's a uh, Windows agent. So we only have one asset in our environment. So I just wanted to provide an overview as to, so when I, once I get into the demo itself proper, uh, you have an understanding of exactly what I'm doing. All right, so with much further ado, uh, let's, let's dive. All right, so uh, now I'm in my labs. Uh, I'm actually running uh, my Qualys on a virtual machine. Uh, so I also have my virtual scanner here, but I'm going to go into details as to step by step to have a proper understanding of, of how the old, uh, I was able to achieve uh, the whole process. Okay, so this is the um, the cloud-based environment for Qualys. Uh, this is my account already. I've actually registered. So you see that I'm running the trial version. Uh, which is going to expire in 26 days 
okay so but let me take you through how you can actually um subscribe uh, for a trial version uh and then we can take it up from there so first thing you do is you go to google and you type uh, quality vulnerability management it, it brings you to uh this page and then you have so you can read up on um this vmdr um subscription and how you can use it to achieve vulnerability management so there's a couple of information here you can just go through to read about but my emphasis is on how we can demo it so once you click on trial try you click on this try and you come to um, the cloud platform free trial okay so once you click on that it, you have to fill in all of this information uh, your work email your first name your last name and your company name uh, once you provide those details then it will send an email uh, you will get a response uh, with the email you provided you with the working email you provided and they'll provide you with details of your um, your login credentials to be able to um, access the platform and once you access the platform uh, you definitely have you come to have a page um, that actually looks like this so uh, we said that Qualis, uh, I'm going to use Qualis to achieve um, the six processes involved in vulnerability management. So this is how the dashboard actually looks like. Uh, these are the subscriptions um, that comes embedded with VMDR. So this is the VMDR subscription itself. This is for continuous monitoring. This is for certificate view. You want to scan for vulnerabilities that has to do with certificates. Or you want to set up uh, monitoring and alerting, or you know, for new security risk, uh, you know, as regards your assets in your environment. And uh, this is also for container security. This is where you want to do um, use. You want to scan your Kubernetes environment, your container environment. You can also use uh, this um, this particular subscription to achieve that. So there's also VMDR for mobile. This is for you to scan your mobile devices uh, within your enterprise. Uh, this is also threat protection. This is for you to run um, threat intelligence on your existing assets. And uh, also cloud view, monitor changes on cloud platforms. And also you can have for asset management, uh, you have, uh, one second, make it full screen. Okay, so for asset management, you have um, cybersecurity asset management. This is where you have a full view of all the assets in your environment. And also global asset view. This also encompasses um, all of that. Uh, but this is actually, as it's a legacy. It means it's, it's actually old, uh, but it's, it's still actually usable. So, you know, so one thing that Qualys also does is Qualys perform, you can perform patch management directly from Qualys, meaning that you don't need to have a, a third party uh, patching solution like your SCCM or your WS US server on Windows, you know, to complete your patching. So this can also be an additional uh, value um, as you run your vulnerability management environment. You can also use it for application security, for web application scanning, for web malware detection, and also for sensor management, um, cloud agents, network passive sensor, uh, quality gateway services, uh, connectors. So I just want to run through all of that. So these are all of these subscriptions that come um, embedded when you when you subscribe for VMD. However, uh, once the trial expires, you have to you know purchase the actual license for you to be able to perform um, all of these um, functionalities. Uh, but the ones that don't have a trial in front of them, you know, they are actually free. So you can run those services um, using the VMDR um, subscription. Even when it expires, you can still, you know, use um, this particular uh, model uh, within the entire platform. So the first thing is uh, when you have access to your VMDR, one of the first thing you want to do is you want to identify all the assets in your environment. And for that, um, you can use, so Qualys allows you to use um, um, Cloud Agent as one option or you can use maps. So what maps does is maps allow you to run um, more like you have your asset discovery kind of a scan in your environment. So this is what we have maps here. So maps allows you to run as many as possible um, asset discovery in your environment uh, to discover all of the assets that you have. And once, depending on the architecture you have, um, Qualys usually um, recommend that you use assets, uh, you use cloud agents because cloud agents 
um, uh, provides much more visibility into all of your assets uh, because all the assets you have, you, once you install the agent on them, then you'll be able to, especially your 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 client base, your Windows and your servers. Um, it allows you to be able to um, connect directly, and then you can run your scans. You know, access vulnerability data. Those vulnerability data will be fed into the cloud uh, platform based on the agent. You can also use maps. So for maps, map is more like you have your you're running your basic um, asset discovery kind of a scan. So if you click on maps here, uh, this is where you can have your title. You can call it host discovery. You can call it host discovery and then you can choose a option profile. So this option profile are different profiles you can actually use to run your scans. So this initial profile is actually okay. Or you can also view other profiles. Um, already embedded in the system or you can actually create your own profile uh, depending on your your environment or your configuration policies uh, when it comes to running asset discovery so this is a typical example so scanning types you can actually edit this scanning uh, this scan profile and then you can begin to you know manipulate it based on whatever thing you want to do so this is the title initial um option then you can change the scan you maybe you want to do light scan or you don't even want to do any tcp scan okay so but these are just uh basic configurations you have uh, when you're running when you want to run a map um however i'll say the qualities as a full um details as we get um how you can actually perform uh, a lot of these different functions they have a very very rich knowledge base where you can learn as much as possible as we cast this but i just want to focus on these processes so that I don't turn this into a quality training. <laughs> all right, so this is the map. So if you're, you're actually scanning for all OC environment, so these are some of the basic um, configuration. And the basic is actually fine though, uh, to perform the functionalities or the your objective. So um, if you want to do asset group, so one thing, another thing about um, um, Qualys is a Qualys has an external scanner, uh, which is internet based. So this external scanner can only scan devices that has agent installed on them. Because this scanner is actually uh, is actually on uh, connected to the internet. It's actually on the internet. So it's scanning from the Qualys um, cloud um, into all of the assets. So, but if you have your own um if you have your own virtual scanner uh, this is my own virtual scanner and i'm going to take you through how you can actually deploy it as well but i'll be using my virtual scanner um to run that test and then you can you can just implement add the ip addresses that you want to um uh, scan uh i can't remember the ip address but here you just need to put in the ip addresses and then you launch and then to provide you with those details uh but for me what i did was that i installed um agents i installed agents in my environment and that allowed me to um it allowed me to be able to capture the agent i have or the host machine that i have in my environment so uh while we wait for that so to 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 so there are two ways you can actually um you know download the cloud agent so the first one is to click on this question mark here and go to welcome uh, once you click on welcome it takes you directly to where you can actually identify the asset itself so if you click on download cloud agent so it gives you all of the agent feeds that it has. Um, so depending on the agent or depending on the operating system you want to install the agent on, all you just need to do is to click on that particular agent. So for me, I'm using Windows machine, uh, which is a particular machine I'm actually on right now. Uh, so this is, so for standard, all you just need to do is to click on download. Once you click on download, you'll be able to download the agent itself. And this is the location of where I have my agent. Um, it's it's actually on my downloads. I've already downloaded it already. So this is how the agent actually looks like. So once you download the agent, you also need to remember the directory where you downloaded that agent. And then you copy this um, this installation command. So with Qualys, you can't you can actually directly install these agents like you know, normally you right click and you do 
uh, install one as number two. This this won't actually work. You have to follow the installation uh, command. You have to use this installation command for it to work. Another thing is that once you're running that, you need to ensure that you have you are using the local administrator privileges on the host. Uh, so they, that host or the the user account you're logged in with on this particular on your host machine must have local administrative privileges. So what you need to do is just to copy this um, installation command and then you go to your command prompt. Once you go to your command prompt, you right click and you run as an administrator. Um, so once it was an administrator, we also need to, uh, like I said, remember the part where we downloaded the cloud agent. So for me, it's in my download. So I just need to navigate to my downloads. Um, okay, and then I do the out, then I see this is where my cloud agent is. So this is my cloud agent. So all I just need to do is to paste, um, is to paste, oh sorry, I didn't, let me say I didn't copy it properly, is to copy this, okay, and then go to my command prompt, and then I paste it. You see, you just right click and you paste it. So once you click on enter, then automatically, um, that cloud agent will be installed and then to be connected to uh, to the VMDR in the cloud. So I've already done this already, so there's no need for me running that. I just wanted to show you how that um, actually works. So once we've done that, uh, you can navigate to your VMDR subscription and you come to. Um, so the, another option I said is to use cloud agent to, to install is first option is to click on this question mark. You click on welcome. And then, and then you click on Cloud Agent. The second option is to click on this down link and you click on Cloud Agent. Okay. So I've already installed, um, this is the Cloud Agent where I have already installed here. So if you want to do that, you can also click on Activation Keys uh, this is a default activation key um, for the cloud agent. So uh, once you go to dashboard, uh, this is my. This shows that I have one agent, and then if you click on it, you can use this particular key to install an agent. Okay, so once you have this, you can click install agents. And then it will take you to a page where you can download any agent you want. So that agent will be referring to this default activation key uh, that we have here. So once you click on this installation instructions, it's the same process. So you just need to download, click here to download, and then you can download the exe here. Then you can copy this um, installation command, and then you can use that to complete that installation command. So uh, another thing I also want to mention on this is that once you're installing, when you're installing a um, an agent, you need to have um, agent modules. So each of these each of these um, assets uh, needs to have an installation. They need to have a particular different modules. So each of those modules will provide you with particular um, additional functionality that you can perform on those assets. So this is a, an, a, a detailed description of my assets. So it provides you with your system information. It provides you with the size of the memory, the free space, the, the disk space. So you can actually use this as your asset inventory. You can actually um, you can actually download it, and then you can use that to compile your asset inventory for your assets in your environment. So this gives you the agent summary. This is the agent information. This is the network information as we get uh, my client machine. These are the open ports. It provides you with the open ports that you have opened on that machine itself. So this is how the open port I have. It also provides you with details on the installed application. These are all of the installed softwares on my um, on my client machine. And because I have run vulnerability scan, so it provides me with the vulnerabilities that I have um, in my environment on that client machine. So it, should, it categorizes them based on severity levels. And also, you can also run a compliance. I haven't done any compliance here, so that's why it's not providing me with that uh, visibility into uh, if my machine is compliant with um, 
compliance with um, regulations like the CIS benchmarks and, and each of those configurations of depending on the compliance policy I want to run in my organization. Then also, we can also run alert notification, uh, which allows you to configure real alerts and accelerate incident uh, response uh, as regards this cloud, uh, as regards this particular agent. And also for patch management. So I said that Qualys allows you to run patches. You can do perform patching in Qualys directly. So these are all of the based on my applications that are running and the scan the vulnerability my vulnerability scan that I run. Uh, it provides me with some of the um, criticals uh, vulnerability or that needs to be patched, and I can actually patch them directly. Uh, for me, I'm going to go into that in one second. So we've used uh, the agent to achieve assets um, discovery. So I have one agent. So depending on the number of agents that I have. So if I have like a thousand agents, I'll definitely view a thousand, uh, you know, host machines here with all of their details. And then you can you can download it. So you can download that CSV file. So you can actually use this itself um, to run, to have a full um visibility or to have use it as your assets um, inventory um your environment so once you download i don't have um csv here okay, let me just download this so i can show you how it looks like um so i think i can open this with notepad yes so it's just give us so this is the details of that um client machine so it provides us with the operating system it provides us with um, the build of that operating system um, and and so okay this just provides me with um, details as we get this but I should be able to um, download all of those assets uh, probably because I have just one asset uh, not be able to do that but i'll definitely see how we can how we can get that done and and have that visibility as we get uh as we get that uh, okay so here is also a configuration profile uh for configuration profile you can actually create your own configuration profile and then you can you can actually install that configuration profile so for me i have another configuration profile which I've created and which is this um, VM test profile so I can click on it and then I can edit it so this is where I create my configuration profile I can create block out so meaning that if this particular cloud agent is not active it, it doesn't send periodic um, details to Qualys I can also configure the performance level which is placed to normal uh, I can assign um, this particular um, I can assign host to a particular tag uh, for this profile so any host that is running on this profile would have uh, would be using this particular um, configuration profile um, so for this agent scan merge, uh, this allows you to scan your to put to merge your your data from on premise and the cloud environment together. Uh, you can use that to merge your vulnerability data. Um, also, the VM scanning interval. Uh, this is the scanning interval in which uh, it collects um, data, vulnerability scanning data, and and, and includes them into Qualys. And this is for uh, policy compliance. It also does the same thing. Uh, this is for secure, secure configuration assessments. This is also provides the same thing. And this is also for patch management. So I've enabled patch management on this particular profile. And then I can actually implement this profile um, across, um, across my entire uh, estate. Uh, okay one second so if i go back to my no sorry if i go back to my agent and i go back to agents here uh, so you see that it's running uh, i want to change this to run my new profile okay so another thing um 
I want to bring to your notice is that once you have this agent, um, this agent won't, you need to activate this particular agent. And to activate the agent, you once you activate that agent, the agent becomes um, active. So I can enable, um, I can enable each of these uh, particular models. So I, I enable vulnerability management for this particular client, uh, policy compliance, secure, um, secure um, configuration assessments. Uh, let me activate this again. And then it's activated. Then I can, I can assign config profile. So let me assign this config profile and save uh, this configuration moment will be updated yes so I, I must have assigned that to it so so but this this agents what this um agent models does is that the more this each of these additional licenses uh, provide you to run uh, these services on this particular agent so meaning that if i don't have patch management if i don't have vulnerability management on this particular agent then i won't be able to run scans on this agent i won't be able to perform um, patch management i'll be able to use secure assessment secure configuration assessment on this particular uh, on this particular agent so that's pretty much it on um, on the cloud and now you can identify um, assets so next thing for us to do is how we can prioritize uh, those assets so once you have your asset there uh, the next thing you would need to do is to come to assets on the on the asset tab um, you you have to create an asset group so what asset group does is an asset groups allows you to um, um, provide or uh, create different groups for your asset based on these criticalities or based on this business um, impact on this function so this is my this is a quick this is a asset group I created and then um, I can actually I can actually I can actually um, edit that um, asset group and take you through how I created the asset group, but this is still the same process. Okay, so let me just try and create a new asset group. Create asset group. So it actually provide me with the same. It's the same process. So you just need to provide the name and and the following details. So let me just go back to this and edit it, and then we can uh, use that for illustration. So I named it as critical assets. Uh, this is the owner, which is myself. And this is the IP address that I want to add to that. So this is the IP address of my client's machine. So this is the IP address that I want to add to this critical asset group. So depending on the number of assets you have, you can have multiple assets that you can add to specific um, um, asset groups. And then you can provide the DNS name, NetBIOS name, um, domain name for that particular asset group. And then you can have users assigned to this group uh, based on the users uh, we have that has access to this cloud platform. Then you can also use specific um, scanning appliances to scan this particular critical asset. So let's say we want to use my virtual scanner. I can use this virtual scanner to scan um, host in this critical asset. So for Qualys, when you're when you're installing a an, a, a, an appliance, um, those appliances is one of the recommendations from Qualys is that you should have your appliance closer to the subnet that you want to scan. So they encourage you to put it behind the firewall. And one of the advantages that cloud agent does is that when, no matter what those devices are, once you have your agent installed on all of those devices then it bypass it doesn't you don't have to worry your head about firewall rules you don't have to worry your head about traversing the firewall for the scan probes to reach the destination i mean if you're using a virtual scanner or if you're using the physical appliance in your network so that's why um i recommend you know going through the cloud agent um expert. also you might also need to have um a physical appliance probably want to use it to scan your network appliances and all that so it might be closer to those devices you want to scan but but if you're using just for windows your 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 endpoint you want to scan your windows your servers and things like that it's good you use um, agent based so this impact uh, business info this is where you can actually determine the criticality 
um so you can make it critical you can make it high you can make it minor so by default um um qualis assign a critical value of 2.0 uh, to all of your uh, all of your assets so if you once you're beginning to once you can start you know creating asset groups and you're putting your assets you're assigning assets to those asset groups then you need to define um those um those criticalities um, you can assign a score to them based on this business impact so if the business impact is very high then you can put that information here and then you can assign the comments and then you can save once you save it creates um, this particular asset group uh it creates this asset group for you so this is what we can actually use to achieve uh you know prioritizing our assets so you create asset groups and then you put in your assets based on your um based on the business impact you know to use that to prioritize your assets so if you want to view um the assets um the criticality score i spoke about the other time if you come to um one second if we go to your cloud agents um looking for that where's that yeah cloud agent um you'll be able to see that critical score that i spoke to a few minutes ago so um oh sorry it's not here it's in the global uh, it's actually the global cyber security asset management so if we go to inventory so you see we have a criticality score you see that your criticality score is showing us four so because of that asset group we created critical asset that we created we assigned it to high so high has a value of four so that's where that value actually comes into play so let me go back to so the next thing is um scanning uh, how do we scan uh, those assets for vulnerabilities so we go back to vmdr so for vmdr uh, we also need to add an appliance um, for you to scan so you can scan any asset without a scanning appliance um, it's because it uses scanning appliance to scan uh, those assets for vulnerabilities and so that's where the um, option where you can actually have a, a scanning appliance uh, within your network if you're using it to scan local devices or you can also use the global um, the global appliance to do that because that will be scanning directly from the cloud so for us to create an appliance um, you click on appliance tab uh let's wait for it for a second so this is my own virtual appliance that i actually created uh it's a virtual appliance and it's connected actually connected to this uh platform so if you want to create so let me take you to how to create a virtual appliance so if you're creating a scanner appliance uh, a scanner appliance could be virtual it could be physical if you're doing scanner appliance it means you want to do a physical appliance so you need to get the activation code from that physical appliance on the panel the the lcd panel of that appliance you know once it's plugged in and you impute that value here then you can activate it then they automatically to be displayed here but if you're using a virtual appliance uh you just need to click on the virtual um, scanner appliance then you might want to download the image yourself or then you may you can download the image only here or if you have the image you might want to configure the scanner so if you're doing it for the first time uh, i recommend you just start wizard so once you click start wizard it show you can input the name new new virtual scanner for example new virtual scanner and then you can choose the platform on which you want to install that that scanner so for me i used vma workstation which is what i'm using uh, and then it's once you click on that for example and then you click next the next thing it does, does is that it start downloading that appliance, uh, that virtual OVA file for you that you can actually use to install. So for me, I have downloaded it. So once the download is complete, uh, this is my download. I have it downloaded here. So what I did here is to create a new virtual machine and then I upload. Um, oh, I just open it directly. I copy it on my local machine. I open it directly and then it brings me here. So. 
so initially the first thing it displays is how you you can actually register um okay so let me just try and just create let me just try and create one here so that we can see exactly what i'm actually talking about uh new virtual machine uh next let me see if i have a location here so downloads um Oh, sorry, I shouldn't do that. What I should do is to open a new virtual machine. So it's open and then I go to downloads. Yeah, so I click on this. This is the Qualys um, scanner itself. And then I click on open. So I, it allows me to name the virtual machine. I can call it test something and then I import it. So once the import is done, once the import is done, then it's provide me with the opportunity for me to be able to synchronize that virtual scanner with the vmdl uh, on the cloud so for that we require to we require to have uh, a particular code so this um one second uh sorry let me just power this on and then I go back to my so it, it provides me with so this personalization code is what I'm going to use on my new virtual scanner so this is my new virtual scanner here it's still it's still loading um, I will need to impute that value um, that number into that um, um, virtualized scanner and then it will be registered with my VMDR uh, on the cloud so i just need to copy this and paste it and then i can configure it based on my environment so that ip address should be like i said your your scanner should be closer to the subnets or to the environment where you, you're trying to scan so for me my ip address of my scanner is similar to my subnet so this is a subnet of where i have all my network so i just provide a bit with an ip address and once that is done it will test um it would it will conf it will run a, a ping test to ensure that it can reach the LAN gateway because if you can't reach the LAN gateway then you won't be able to perform your scans uh, appropriately you won't be able to this um scanner won't won't be functional uh, it won't be functional so let me go back to our test scanner and let's see okay still actually loading so pretty much that's pretty much what needs to be done on that side we just need to run the configuration uh run the configuration provide the ip addresses if it's going to be connecting to the internet provide it with the ip addresses for for the one interface and then you can configure the ip addresses uh, you can also configure proxy if your environment requires a proxy um then you can also you can also then you can also reset your network um settings and just i just need to do just follow through follow through on those um, on those commands and then you you would be fine um, as we get configuring the appliance so once we configure the appliance which is my appliance here the next thing we need to do is to then schedule a scan for us to be able to for us to be able to um, um, gather vulnerability data so the, let me just create it this is the scan i run uh, on that particular agent uh, so um, this is how to create the scan. Uh, so you name the title, uh, scan, scan test, whatever thing we want to call it. Then you need to use an option profile. So option profile is a profile that will be used to scan um, your environment. So we can choose multiple of those, um, multiple of those op uh, option profiles. So these are uh, ideally it comes with four. Uh, this is excluded because I was the one who pick it from the option profile library. So these are uh, multiple profiles that you can actually select from so you can select any of these so once you select like this authentication scan v1 for example you then import it once you import it it brings that profile it brings it to the option profile here so that's why i have that information here that's why i have that scanning profile here so i can click this scanning profile and then i can use it 
to run my scan so this processing priorities means that you can you can place these scans on different priority levels so you can use emergency ultimate um, depending on how critical or the the urgency of that of that scan so if you have multiple scans for example you put it on critical it would it would make this scan to prioritize this scan uh, as compared to other scans so for me no uh, priority so i spoke about the scanning appliances so this is where i have my scan appliance so this is the external scan that comes um, with uh, you having a scanning up so this external is the one from qualis it's from the internet so you can use that to scan all of your agents so this applies majorly to the agents uh, and also for the virtual scanner, this is the virtual scanner in my environment and I can actually use this to scan and then you can use, you can reference your asset groups uh, which is uh, what I have here, my critical asset group here and then automatically it's, uh, it picks up the IP address so if I click launch, it should, it should launch It should launch that scan. So it's actually processing that moment. Okay, so it's actually queued. So this is the scan we are running. It's actually queued. So let me just delete this because I've actually run this scan already. So let me just delete that. I just wanted to show you how you can actually you know configure your um your scans and on the scanning option i spoke about we can also you can also create your own or edit a scan profile so if you want to create yours you can create depending on you can easily to create an pci um, option profile so if you click option profile uh you can actually create your own profile so we can call it test test profile for example or this you want to use a specific configuration to scan specific devices so you can also sketch it as um so i said maps is for um, asset discovery and then you can use that then if you say make this a global available option meaning that each time you log into uh, you want to use a profile you would have it as the top uh, profile global profile that you can actually itemize and you can use so for the scan you can say you want to scan um, standard ports you can do light ports so this is where you have to you know drill down depending on um your environment and exactly what you want to achieve with your with your type of scans i'm not going to go into do that i just want to focus on ensuring how we can use that so so this is as we get scanning so so for us to view the scanning results you can go to dashboard vulnerabilities um vulnerabilities will provide us uh, with all of the vulnerabilities that was discovered on that particular on that particular asset so and it's going to categorize them based on severity level so these are all the vulnerabilities and you can see it provides you with the vulnerability it provides you with uh, the uh, last detected and first detected and provides you with the severity levels and you can dig deeper into that vulnerability uh, for analysis so it shows you the vulnerability results severity level the ip addresses you know more information as we get as you can start so if you click on the general information so it also provides you with the cv analysis cvss analysis so it provides us with database analysis in terms of the cvss score for cvss version 3.1 we saying that this vulnerability is 3.7 for temporal is 3.6 and then if it's there's an exploitable um, model or any form of um, exploitability maybe for metasploit or for canvas you know it provides you with that source of um, that exploit that can be used to you know um, exploit that particular vulnerability and provide you with the patch if the patch is available and if there's a malware if the malware is actually available for that vulnerability so and if we, if we go back to um, general uh, it also provides us with um, solution. I think I think go back. I think I think view that uh, most of the time it provides us with a solution of how we can actually fix that 
uh, vulnerability. Uh, I don't know where that general information. Okay, so under general information, yeah, it provides you with the impact. So knowing a valid username allows for substantially to put force an attack. So if a user is trying to, if an attacker tries to uh, put force user accounts to find user accounts that are actually available on a particular target machine uh, it can actually start boot forcing that user account to gain access into your environment so the solution here is to rename the guest account so once we name the guest account and we will want the scan then we would have um, we'll be able to um, we'll be able to you know close that particular remediation and that vulnerability so these are all of the vulnerabilities we have here as we get that was discovered from the scan so it's just 32 uh, vulnerabilities so each of them based on severity and you can group them uh, based on severity level so it provides you with a grouping so if you want to see only severity 5 uh, you just click on this one and it shows you this severity so this particular machine has reached end of life and you see it shows us that uh, this is where the vulnerability the the, the, uh, the the directory to where that vulnerability is and it's that there's reached um, end of life so since the vendor longer provides software updates this device has reached end of life and it's it's actually susceptible to a denial of service attack and then the solution is to customers are advised to upgrade so it provides you with the upgrade part um, or then another link in a way you can gather more information as to how you can you know um, upgrade to the latest um, version you know that is actually supported uh, for you to close that uh, to remediate this particular vulnerability so uh, we've, we've dealt with uh, vulnerabilities that is access so the next thing is let's look at reports how can we generate reports on callers uh, that we can send out to c suite executive or to the technical team so these are all of the reporting uh, so this is the report template itself so you can select it of this report template to provide or send out to uh, different um, audiences so for example if i'm using a technical report uh, it provides me with uh, information about that and then i can i can I can use that to generate a report. So if I say one, it's going to provide me with a technical report. Um, so let me say technical report for this particular vulnerability. So format, I can choose different format. I can choose PDF, for example. And then I'll select the asset group that it concerns. So this is the asset group. And then I can, if I want to use any of the asset tags, uh, I can choose any asset tags I want to use, or I can just use all. And then I can also schedule the report option. I can choose a particular date and time um, to schedule that report. And then if I'm not scheduling, I can just run it now. And then once we have that report, we can actually um, send it out to the concerned um audience that would need that report so this is where you can get as many reports as possible uh you can also create a, a scan template or even a patch template uh, in terms of reporting this everything you asked to do in this uh, tab has to do reporting also we can also do risk analysis um also on based on the particular qi demons quality identifier so we can use a particular quality identifier for example let me copy this quality identifier and so let's say for example we have a a ransomware um ravaging you know our environment and you want to and qualis provide you with that um, qualis id so let me use this qualis id for example one zero one zero five two two eight and let me go back to reports uh one zero five two two eight and so risk analysis so i can confirm 105228 and then i'll merge it with my asset group and then run a risk analysis based on this um, qid so it will provide me with the risk report um, as we get um, that um, quality identifier for that uh, particular vulnerability so why we'll wait for that uh, let's move on to other things so we've completed the report so let's go back to um, remediation or, or patching. So for remediation, once you you can click on remediation here, and then you can actually 
you can actually create policies uh, for remediation or you can create a particular ticket for each of those vulnerabilities and determine who you are assigning um, those vulnerabilities to and, and how they can actually remediate um, those uh, particular uh, vulnerabilities. So this remediation tag um, or this tab provides you with how you can actually manage those vulnerabilities, provide a ticket and assign it to a specific administrator and to see how they can actually remediate them and then they can provide you with details as to if it has been uh, actually been completed. But one thing I also want to pay attention to is uh, once this is done, let me see if this end of the report. Okay, so the risk analysis report is done. So it shows us that um, it has no impact. So this is this is what we have. This is the search for that key ID. This is the information that we have. Exploitability, there's no exploitability. So it provides us with the compliance um, that we need to ensure that this vulnerability method, renaming this guest is actually compliant with COVID. So it provides us with a lot of information as regards, you know, analyzing the risk uh, for that particular vulnerability. And then you can you can remove it, you can launch your vulnerability scan, you can you can purge, you can do whatever thing you want to actually want to do. Um, so this is where you can actually create tickets uh, based on policies. So you can actually create a policy, remediation policy, and you can name it whatever you want to name it. And then you can have some conditions um, as we get um, those uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, but I want to I wanted to show um, point of addition to this. Um, Prioritization, for example. So, what prioritization helps to do is that it helps you to prioritize your vulnerabilities uh, based on this risk, so that when you when mediate, uh, you can actually remediate properly. Uh, because most times, once you want a vulnerability scan, it provides you with a huge amount of data, and, and here comes to you know prioritizing those vulnerabilities uh, to ensure that your system engineers are not are not fucked out based on the huge amount of vulnerabilities. So on this prioritization tab, you can actually prioritize um, those vulnerabilities. So you prioritize based on tags. So you select an asset tag or um, you select... Uh, so for me, I created an asset group. So if you use an asset group, we use asset group, right? And then click on next. So it will provide us that detail. Um, as we get the vulnerabilities. So these are all of the vulnerabilities we have. You see, we have 30 vulnerabilities um, based on also on the CVSS rating. So um, you can actually prioritize. So it says these are also active threats. You can prioritize based on active threats. Uh, you can select what you want to prioritize is that do they have active threats? Are they public exploit available? Is there around somewhere? Are they easy exploits? Are they predicted high risk? You know, so these are some of the potential impacts you can actually, you know, select to check for to use to prioritize those vulnerabilities. And then we can click prioritize now. So it will provide us with uh, the assets and the vulnerabilities that should be prioritized. So it shows us, uh, it's showing us we have two assets, which is actually one though. So we have 27 prioritized, uh, it prioritized 27 vulnerabilities out of 30, 90%. So saying that 27 are actually unique and there are actually no patches um, available uh, for this prioritize. Some of them does not are not available. So if you look at this, for example, this has a patch and then you can actually patch now. Uh, based on the licensing that we have for that particular um, IP address. So it brings us back here and then you can select um, this particular agent. Yeah, so this agent is not going to be activated. So we can look at the activation keys. So there's patch management, you know, attached to it. And then we can go back to um, so let me go back to, um, but let me just go to patch management specifically. And then I can actually see how I can patch that particular vulnerability. And the beauty of it is that uh, with Qualys, Qualys allows you to, to patch based on um, based on applications. So these are all the applications you have based on vendors. And then Qualys will find those missing vend missing patches and then provide it uh, in one space for you to actually patch. So 
Um, these are all of the applications. So if you see the applications you have here, these are all of the missing patches you have uh, based on those applications. So I can click on this, for example, and then we can we can actually you know get more information about the patches, and then we can see how we can actually uh, uh, patch that particular uh, vulnerability uh, affected. These are the affected applications that the patch is going to help. Um, superseded patch, there's no superseded patch. Uh, these are the vulnerabilities that that patch will actually resolve. And this is the asset itself. Uh, this is the asset that, that was scanned and it has 84 missing uh, patches and 27 of those patches actually exist. Uh, so let me go back and see how we can actually patch um, that particular vulnerability um, so we'll click here and then so for us to patch you need to you need to add it to a new job so if you click on add to a new job so it will create a patching job so because i'm using a trial license um, it's not i'm not allowed to to do that uh, patching but if um if my part, if I was using a full, um, a full license, I'll be able to run the patch from here. But this just provides to you that uh, you can actually patch um, vulnerabilities uh, directly, uh, directly from from Qualys. So that's the uh, possibility or the advantage that uh, that it actually has. So. Um, so this is the patch at the new job automate mapping uh, so yeah, as said with the full version of quality patch management so this is the reason why i can actually patch so we need to create a job and that job once that job is created then uh, the patching would would complete so so that's pretty much um, all of the processes that um, qualis allows us to do and once we've gone ahead with that, with the patch, we've completed the patch, then we can go back to our scans, and then we can we can actually rerun we can actually rerun that particular scan, and then we it would be good to go to validate all of these vulnerabilities. Uh, but let's go to the dashboard uh, before I before I end this video. Uh, so the dashboard is going to provide us with a complete overview. Um, over the vulnerabilities, you know, different widgets to provide different information. So this, we have 32 vulnerabilities in total on this particular asset that was scanned. So the vulnerability type uh, says confirmed means that those vulnerabilities have been confirmed, uh, means that they, they are actually known to the vendors and they are workarounds or solutions to resolve those vulnerabilities. For potential means that there are no full information as you get some um, quality is not 100 percent sure as regards to those vulnerability types so it provides those vulnerabilities according to severity levels uh, so this is considered severity 3 this is considered severity 4 severity 2 and severity 5 so 5 meaning that this is critical and they provide us with the the age of the vulnerability saying that um, in the last 30 days it's this 32 that is still counting and these are the top vulnerabilities from severity 3 to 5. Uh, this is the most vulnerable host. And um, this is the scan, the last scan that we ran. So this applies to, so this actually applies to all of the details as we can start. And then you can, you know, you can view more dashboards. You can create your own um, dashboard. Click on this plus sign. It allows you, this allows you to add the widgets. And then you can add the widgets to, um, the existing dashboard or you can actually create your own dashboard from scratch and then you can you know you can create your own dashboard from scratch and then you can begin to add different widgets um, to represent different information as we catch your, your 
your value uh, as regards your 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 scan data and all that so this is actually this is not a full um quality training uh this is actually very what i just did was just i just did a touch point to identify how you can use qualis to achieve those processes but this requires this this can i could actually do a full training this requires a full training for us to go through what qualis actually has to offer but i just wanted to give uh, an overview of what um, how we can use qualis to achieve um, this technology side of vulnerability management um, using those um, six processes that every vulnerability environment um, should actually go through uh, i know this is really very long i hope you find it very valuable and uh, i'll see you i'll see you in my next uh, i'll see you in my next video mm -hmm.